Hi, we're going to go through tutorial number one, the one in the with the Lincoln Broad once again and very slowly to see all the details involved in the process. When we create a new project in Kplex, we can create it either from a new geometry, from an existing geometry or through our shape. In this case, we're going to go through an existing uh, geometry. So here are the list of all the geometries I have uploaded into the platform, which are a lot, of course. If I go very down, I get this uh, button that shows sample geometries. So these sample geometries are a list of geometries that every user in Unshape can use to create a new project. So I'm going to search for the Lincoln Road. So this is the one that we need to use for the tutorial. So when we click on a geometry, we get this preview and we can take some further looks. For example, we can measure distances, say from this point up to this point. So we can see the distance to check that we are uh, dealing with the correct geometry. We can clip the geometry to see inside it and to check that again we have the right geometry. So say we are happy with this and then we are ready to start a new project. Projects in k can be either mechanical, thermal or model. So in this case it will be a mechanical problem. Uh, we will leave these two for further tutorials. And visibility can be either public or private. So remember that if you want your project to be private, you need a non-free plan. In this case we are going to make it public. So every user can see the project, can have read-only access to the project. So mechanical projects need to define material properties, properties which are the Young's modulus and the Poisson's ratio. The default values work well for steel-like materials, so we will leave them with the default values. So, so then we have to add a displacement condition. When we add a displacement condition and we paint so surfaces, uh, displacements can be either fixed, prescribed, symmetry or rotation. So if we are on the fixed type of displacement, we can fix either one or more of the degrees of freedom. So U will be displacements in the X directions, V will be displacements in the Y direction, and W will be displacements in the Z direction. If we pick all three of them, so that means that the magenta surface will remain fixed. It will not move. We can we can instead prescribe the displacement. So let's say if I write U equals to one, that means that these surfaces will be displaced one millimeter in the X direction and will remain free to move in the other two directions. So in this case, we're going to fix all three degrees of freedom for the magenta surfaces because that is what the problem is asking for. Then we can add a external load condition. So loads can be in either pressure, force or momentum. In this case, the problem asks to put a, a certain pressure of 20 megapascals into these two surfaces. What is the difference between pressure and force? Say for example that we set a pressure condition and we paint all the internal surfaces of this cylinder. So the net force will be zero because pressure acts locally on the normal of the surface. So this pressure of 20 megapascals will be acting in all the directions here with a net resultant force of zero. If instead we set a force, say, of 1 kN in the x direction, the resultant will be 1 kN in the x direction, independently of the normal of the surface. In any case, the problem asks for a pressure of 20 MPa acting only on these two faces, so in this case there will be a net force acting in the x direction. And that's it, that's what the problem asks for. We might also add internal loads that act not on surfaces but within the whole body of the geometry, for example weight or centrifugal forces or general expressions, but in this case it's not. We might also add a temperature distribution, but we will leave these two fields for further tutorials. We are ready to move on and then we're going to go to step number two of the three-step workflow. Step number two is meshing, and by default we get a very coarse mesh. We might be happy with this, but for example, the mesh here is not very nice. So what we can do is to change the global element size 
the, the smaller the element size, the larger the number of nodes that we will get. We can change either of two. Uh, we can, for example, say, okay, we're going to target for 30,000 nodes. We can refresh. Then we will get a finer mesh, but still not so nice. What we can do here is we can add local refinements and paint these surfaces here. So this means that elements within these surfaces and nearby will be smaller than the rest of the elements. So we, we can refresh again. So I hit the next button, but because there were changes that need to be recomputed, we are still in step number two. So we get a finer mesh here. Say we are happy with this, um, we might also change, for example, the algorithms and the optimization of the mesh, but for the sake of illustration, let's say we are happy, then we're going to solve the problem in a three-step fashion. First, the KPLX needs to build a stiffness matrix, then it needs to solve for the displacements, and then it needs to compute the stresses out of the displacements. So this is running on the cloud. We might be able to close the window, the browser here, uh, open it in our phones or whatever, and the process will not be interrupted because it's running on the cloud. So once that we get the results, we can play with them. Uh, we can, I will take out the access. Um, we can warp the displacements. Uh, here we have a ball at the location of maximum displacement and the maximum stress that we can toggle uh, away. Uh, then instead of for this stress, we can we can see, for example, principal stresses. Uh, we can change the the range of the the reference. Whatever value suits. Uh, we can put a finite element, uh, number of intervals. Uh, we can compare with the original grid. So we can, we can still warp it. Uh, we can take a snapshot. So this snapshot will give me a PNG file with transparent background. So we can put it into our presentations or within our reports, whatever. Um, and we can download the VTK file for further post-processing. So this is uh, how the tutorial number one about the linking rod can be solved again in a very more detailed way using all the tools that Capex provides.